All right, so today's topping is Paul's MIG. What is it? Do you need it? Or when do you need it? First of all, let's talk about the difference in Paul's TIG and Paul's MIG. A lot of you guys are familiar with Paul's on the TIG side. On the TIG side, if you set your machine, for example, to 150 amps, that's your peak pulse. Now you do a percentage off of that for your background, maybe 30%. So then your background would be at 50 amps. Then you pick um, a pulse on time, let's say also 30%. So, and you pick a frequency uh, here for simplicity, one hertz. So if this is your TIG arc, then you have um, 150 amps for 30% of the time, and then you have 50 amps for two-thirds of the time. And then the same thing happens again, 150 amps for a third of the time, and 50 amps for two-thirds of the time. And from here to here, this is one full cycle, one hertz. If you have one pulse per second, then that's how it is. If you have 30 pulses per second, then you count 30 of those for one second. So this will reduce your overall heat input. So on pulse MIG, things work a little bit different. Let's talk about who can pulse make and when you can pulse make. In order to pulse make, it needs to be a spray arc. It always needs to be a spray arc. It can't be any short circuit or bacon frying sound. It can't be any globule transfer. It has to be a true spray arc that can be pulsed. And then you have to have an inverter machine. You cannot really pulse with a transformer machine like this because you cannot establish the background that quick and change your, your power levels. So if you wanna do this on steel, for example, a spray arc in steel uh, is typically only like a flat position, like a, like a 1G or 1F weld. It can only be done in a flat position. A lot of hydraulic shops use this to create leak tight um, hydraulic cylinder bases. And how can they weld around the pipe? Well, they put it in a rotary fixture. They hold the, pi they hold the welding gun on 12 o'clock. The pipe rotates, it's essentially a 1G weld. So people use this in structural steel or to do those hydraulic cylinders. The, the main thing is you get really good wash, you get really good penetration, it's very hot, you get leak tight welds. There is, there's a lot of positives about a spray arc. The problem is you're limited in your weld position and you also put a lot of heat in the part. So what Pulse does is it cools that spray arc down a little bit where now you can run it out of position or you can even fill some gaps and you can weld materials that are thinner than... If you do a MIG spray arc, it depends what wire you use and what your settings are. Typically quarter inch and up, just as a rule of thumb, is your material thickness. If you want to weld pulsed spray, you can do this as thin as 1 16th of an inch. So the way how this works is when you pulse MIG weld, when you spray MIG weld, here's your nozzle, here's your contact tip, the wire comes out, and somewhere between the contact tip and the part, what happens is there's always a droplet forming at the end of the wire, and when that droplet is large enough, it gets thrown into the stream of droplets and you get the spray arc spraying onto the material. So when you look at this, this is much like, picture it much like a water glass. If you have a one glass of water in front of you and you fill that with water and you sit there and it's almost full, water is like right here, and then you sit here with a turkey baster and like, and you drip some more water drops in there and you drop, drop, drop till this is like full and more over full and over, over full. And eventually 
it's going to just run off to the side, that, that mountain of water will, when the surface tension can't hold it. That is when your droplet detaches from here and gets thrown into the stream of spray. Now, what Pulse does is, you sit here with your glass of water, and it's almost full, and you put more water in it, another, another drop here and another drop there, and it's starting to build up over the top a little bit, but not too crazy yet. And then you go take a postcard and scoop that water off, but a smaller amount of water. You know, here you have a big puddle on the floor, and here you have a small puddle on the floor. So what this does is, as you weld, the size of that droplet is a lot smaller. The machine, the inverter, is able to send a burst of current to detach a smaller droplet against the surface tension of the liquid metal, and then it gets thrown into the spray stream. At this point, this droplet is very hot but very small. You have less wire melting off, you have better control. You still have the spray arc, the deep washing, the leak tightness, but you can run it out of position, less warpage, less distortion, less heat input. So the way how this works is, on a transformer machine, your power level is just consistent. It's always there. And if you do short circuit, the wire dips in and out, does its thing, nothing happens. If you do spray arc, it just sprays. On an inverter type machine like this, you have a peak pulse that pinches the droplet off. You know, when the postcard comes, shoves it off. Then you have a tail of a pulse, which looks anywhere from like this to like that. It depends on the machine, it depends on the metal, there's some proprietary engineering going on. This tail of the pulse, this peak pulse pinches a droplet off. This tail of the pulse forms a new droplet. Then you have a period of rest where the jiggling, the droplet sits there normally and jiggles. It gets stabilized and once it's stabilized, a new peak pulse comes, chops it back off and the whole process repeats from there. So this is the way how the pulse MIG works. So now back to the TIG, you can pick a bunch of settings. You pick peak pulse amps, you pick background, you pick pulse duty or pulse on time, and you can select all these settings yourself. Why can you do this? Because this is just heat you're dealing with. Here you have moving parts the way how this works is there is proprietary tables that are programmed into the machine according to wire type, alloy, diameter, wire feed rate, and typically what happens is the pulse frequency goes up as your inches per minute, your wire feed speed increases. So as your wire feed speed increases, the pulse frequency increases. And why is that? Because the size of this droplet is supposed to be consistent. Same size droplet every time. As the wire feeds out slow, the pulse frequency is slow, like a pop, 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 pop. As it increases, it goes boop, and then boop, to just a tone. If the wire feeds really fast, it has to chop more droplets off faster to keep the same size droplet to keep the consistency for the operator. So as far as the background and the pulse on time, there is also proprietary charts that people spend a lot of time developing just the perfect profile based on the wire, based on the machine, based on the dynamics. If the manufacturer would give the operator the ability to pick all these settings by themselves, it would probably take them weeks, if not months, of research and development to figure all these out. And every time you make a small adjustment to your wire speed or to your voltage, you would have to then consequently adjust a bunch of other pulse parameters as well, which is highly unpractical. So 
this is what Pulse MIG is and why you would want to use it on steel. You would use it to build hydraulic oil tanks, fuel tanks, uh, create leak tight welds on hydraulic cylinders. You would want to use it on material that is thinner than a quarter of an inch. It can be thicker too. Um, you have to use it on like eighth inch. You build an eighth inch hydraulic oil tank. You can't do this in spray arc. The spray arc would just be way too hot. And where short circuit has the risk of cold fusion, the spray arc gives you the ability to have a nice, deep, full, full washing in, make a full leak tight seam all the way along. So that is what Pulse MIG is. And maybe you need it, maybe you don't, depending on your application.